Welcome back to the Movement Professional Podcast. I'm Dr. Chris Lab. So this week, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to play a podcast that was generated through AI that was a review of my book, Longevity Through Movement. So I just kind of generated for fun. And what came out was uh, was pretty impressive. And I thought it would be very informative to what my first book has to say. You know, most of it without me having to do much editing was exactly what I would want to portray from what I wrote. So um, I'm going to play that for you. It's, it's a quick audio, about 15 minutes long. And um, hopefully it gives you some information about what I'm trying to get forward with some of the work that I've done with what my first book was about. It's basically trying to prioritize which movements will help you get the most bang for your buck when you're thinking about your fitness or health. So hopefully you enjoy. Okay, so you're interested in living a longer, healthier life, and you're curious about longevity through movement. It's true. Dr. Lev's work is really resonating right now because it taps into this growing body of research suggesting that movement is about so much more than physical health. And it's not just about hitting the gym, right? Exactly. Dr. Live's approach is about making movement a part of your entire life, weaving it into your psychology, nutrition, and daily habits. That's so interesting. It makes me think about all those years I spent at a desk, barely moving beyond typing on a keyboard. And that's exactly what Dr. Live wants us to realize. Those repeated, limited movements can actually make our bodies feel older. That's where movement variability comes in. This concept really blew my mind. It's like, our bodies are designed to move in so many ways, but we get stuck in these ruts. Think of it like this. Imagine only ever using a hammer from a toolbox full of tools. The other tools become rusty and useless. It's the same with our bodies. He connects things like constantly staring at screens, lack of gaze variability to physical issues like neck pain and dizziness. Longevity through movement offers a pathway, encouraging us to break free from those limitations. That's a relief because the book also talks about rethinking exercise and how those super intense workout routines aren't always the answer. Exactly. Dr. Leib introduces this idea called periodized renunciation, which sounds more complicated than it is. It's simply about recognizing that overhauling your entire life at once usually leads to failure. That's such a great takeaway, starting with one small change. The book also highlights the connection between what we do and the mindfulness piece of the longevity puzzle. Absolutely. And again, it's all connected. When we move more, we're more in tune with our energy levels, and that naturally helps us make better food choices. The book has a lot to say about movement, of course, but it also talks about nutrition, right? The dietary advice is pretty straightforward. Focus on whole foods, especially fruits and vegetables, and practice moderation. I like it. So we've covered the importance of moving in varied ways, rethinking how we exercise, and bringing mindfulness to our eating. Now, how do we actually put this into practice? Well, Dr. Live has this really unique approach to movement mastery that I think you're going to find incredibly useful. Okay, so movement mastery. It sounds intense, but I'm guessing it's not about becoming some kind of athlete. Not at all. Uh, this isn't about, you know, becoming a super athlete or anything like that. It's about meeting your body where it's at. You know, Dr. Live introduces this concept of a movement continuum to help you assess your own readiness. It's not about comparing yourself to others or some ideal standard. It's about honestly assessing your starting point and building from there. I love that. So often we get discouraged because we compare ourselves to others or to what we used to be able to do. Exactly. The continuum helps you take ownership of your movement practice. It breaks things down into elements, starting with how well you control different positions, like, you know, are you able to hold a squat, a lunge, things like that? And then how smoothly can you transition between those positions? And crucially, it's all about listening to your body's signals and respecting your limits. It makes me think about those four markers of control the book talks about. Yeah. Can you refresh your memory on those? What were they again? Of course. They are pain, breath control, postural control, and impact control. They're basically your body's way of telling you whether you're moving well or need to adjust. Right, right. Let's take pain, for example. Yeah, pain is a big one. Huge. Dr. Live points out that pain isn't always about actual tissue damage, especially for people with chronic pain. Often, pain is more about what your nervous system perceives as a threat rather than an actual injury. So it's more about like, your brain sending you a warning signal rather than your body actually being damaged, you know? That's so important for people to understand. We often avoid movement because we're afraid of pain, 
But that fear can actually be more harmful in the long run, right? Yeah, precisely. Yeah. And that's where paying attention to your breath during movement comes in. Oh, interesting. It's another one of those markers of control, and it can be so revealing. A relaxed, controlled breath usually means you're moving within your capacity. But if you find yourself holding your breath or your breathing becomes strained... That's your body saying something's up. Exactly. It's your body telling you to back off and adjust. It's like our breath is a built-in feedback mechanism. Yeah. Exactly. And the great thing is you can actually train yourself to become more aware of your breath and use it to improve your movement practice. So we've laid some groundwork here with this idea of movement mastery. Now, I'm really curious to hear about the specific movement patterns Dr. Leib highlights as being super important for longevity. What are some of the, like, key moves we should be thinking about? Well, you already mentioned how sitting for long periods can be detrimental. Dr. Leib talks about how simply being able to get up and down from the ground easily is a surprisingly strong predictor of how long you'll live. Really? I have to admit, I haven't gotten up and down from the floor without using my hands in a while. It's something we take for granted when we're younger, but it becomes more challenging as we age. There's actually a study cited in the book that found a direct correlation between this ability and lifespan. People who could easily get up and down from the floor tended to live longer than those who struggled. It's a powerful indicator of overall functional strength and mobility. Wow, that's pretty eye-opening. And the good news is, it's a movement you can work on. Longevity through movement breaks it down into progressions so you can start wherever you're at. You might need to begin using a chair or a low stool for support and gradually lower that support until you can do it unassisted. It sounds like it's all about building that foundation. Exactly. And another movement that's surprisingly important and that we often lose as we age is squatting. You know, when you first mentioned squatting and its benefits for, well, digestion, I have to admit I was a little skeptical. It might sound strange, but there's a real physiological connection there. Okay. Deep squatting actually helps open up your hips and improve ankle mobility. And that, in turn, facilitates, shall we say, smoother digestion. It's a very natural position that our bodies are designed for, but because of our modern lifestyles, we've lost touch with it. And I imagine many people listening are probably thinking, yeah, I don't think I could squat deeply right now if I tried. And that's okay. Longevity through movement doesn't just tell you to squat, it shows you how. Dr. Leib provides progressions, starting with supported squats using a chair or a wall, gradually working towards those more challenging freestanding squats. It's fascinating how these movements that seem so basic are actually so fundamental to our health and longevity. Absolutely. And there's one more I want to highlight, grip strength. We touched on it earlier, and I have to say, I was really surprised by the connection between grip strength and longevity. It seems like such a small thing. It's anything but small. Think about how much we use our grip strength every single day. Carrying groceries, opening jars, preventing falls, it's all connected to how strong our hands and forearms are. So it's not just about how much weight we can lift at the gym. Exactly. Dr. Lai breaks down grip strength into four main types, crush grip, pinch grip, support grip, and open hand grip, and each type plays a role in different activities. That makes so much sense. It's like having different tools in your toolbox for different jobs. Exactly. And just like any other muscle group, you can train your grip strength. Dr. Lai provides some really easy to implement exercises you can incorporate into your day, things like farmer's carries, dead hangs, even just squeezing a stress ball or paying attention to how you grip objects. This is all so practical. I think that's what I appreciate most about longevity through movement. Mm -hmm. It gives you the why behind the advice and then provides clear, actionable steps you can take. And it's not about overhauling your entire life. It's about building those foundational movements into your existing routine, gradually increasing the challenge and intensity over time. It really is about playing the long game. So we've talked about these key movement patterns, getting up and down from the floor, squatting, grip strength. But how do we take all of this and create a sustainable movement routine that supports our longevity goals? How do we put it all together? That's where the concept of movement programming comes in. Movement programming is, makes me think of those complicated workout plans you see in fitness magazines. It's actually much simpler than that. Dr. Leib is a big proponent of consistency over intensity. It's not about crushing it at the gym every single day. It's about finding a level of challenge that feels good and that you can realistically maintain over time. Think of it as building a lifelong practice, not just chasing short-term results. That definitely resonates with me. Uh. I've definitely fallen into the trap of starting out too gung-ho with a new workout routine, only to burn out after a few weeks. 
It happens to the best of us. Longevity through movement encourages a more gradual and importantly sustainable approach. Start with a few short movement sessions a week and slowly build from there. Increase the duration, up the intensity as you feel yourself getting stronger, more confident in your movement, and always, always listen to your body. Pain is a signal to back off, to adjust. This is about working with your body, not against it. Playing the long game, right? Exactly. And just as important as consistency is finding activities you enjoy. If you're dreading your workouts, you're far less likely to stick with them long term. Dr. Leib really wants you to experience movement as a celebration of what your body can do. So find what brings you joy. Maybe it's dancing, hiking, swimming, playing a sport. It all counts. Movement should be fun. Mm -hmm. So often it feels like a chore we have to do, not something we get to do. And that's exactly the mindset shift Dr. Leib encourages. He wants us to see movement as a gift. I love that. Okay, so how do we put this into practice? What might a longevity through movement inspired workout routine actually look like? Give us an example. Well, it will be different for everyone, right? Your needs and preferences aren't gonna be the same as mine. Yeah. But just to give you an idea, a sample routine could look something like this. You'd start with five to 10 minutes of gentle movement to warm up your body, maybe some light stretching, arm circles, just getting the blood flowing. I like that easing into it. Then you might move into some get up practice. Remember, that's that sequence of movements that takes you from lying on your back to standing. Start with maybe three to five repetitions on each side. If you're new to this, you can begin with a supported variation using a wall or a chair for assistance. As you get stronger, more mobile, you can progress to more challenging variations. I'm already feeling more mobile just thinking about it. <laughs> From there, we can move into some squat practice. Choose the variation that feels appropriate for your current fitness level. Don't be afraid to modify if you need to. It's all about working with your body where it's at today. Exactly. And then we can dedicate a few minutes to some grip strength work. You can do farmer's carries, dead hangs, pinch grip exercises, whatever feels challenging but doable. I'm definitely going to be trying those out throughout my day. And then finally, finish up with five to ten minutes of cool down stretches or some foam rolling. This will help your muscles recover and improve your flexibility. That sounds like a really balanced and achievable routine. And the best part is, it can be adapted. You can change it up depending on how much time you have, how your body's feeling. The important thing is to make it a regular part of your life. It's about that long-term vision of health and longevity. And finally, we can't forget the mental and emotional aspects of movement. Longevity through movement emphasizes the importance of mindfulness, of cultivating a positive mindset. It's not just about the physical, it's about how we think and feel when we move. Precisely. Dr. Live encourages you to view movement as an opportunity. It's a chance to connect with your body, to appreciate your physical capabilities, to really celebrate the gift of being alive. Wow, I love that. This has been such an eye-opening conversation. Longevity through movement really offers such a holistic perspective on movement and aging. It's not about striving for some ideal body or hitting certain fitness milestones. It's about moving in ways that make you feel good, both physically and mentally. It's about embracing movement as an integral part of a long, healthy, and fulfilling life. And remember, it's never too late to start. No matter your age or current fitness level, you can benefit from incorporating these principles into your life. So for anyone listening who feels inspired to move a little differently today, what's the one thing you would encourage them to focus on? Start small. Pick one thing from this conversation that resonated with you, whether it's trying a new movement, paying attention to your breath, or simply shifting your mindset around exercise. Start there and see where it takes you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Movement Professional Podcast. I hope you found valuable insights to elevate your movement journey. If you've enjoyed today's discussion, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. For those looking to deepen their practice, check out my books, Longevity Through Movement and Mobilize. Both books are designed to empower you with the knowledge and tools to enhance your movement practice and overall wellness. Both books can be found easily at movementprofessional.com. Also, while you're on the website, be sure to explore our longevity-based training subscription service. It's my new comprehensive program tailored to help you prioritize your movement practice in order to promote long-term health and vitality. Join us next week as we dive into more engaging topics. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at movementprof and on YouTube on the Movement Professional channel. Remember, your movement journey is a lifelong adventure. Embrace it fully. I'll see you next time.